This is the fifth anniversary of our annual August Q&A session where interesting questions and comments from Instagram are discussed on YouTube. The channel gets a lot of questions on engine oils and I always try to make a note of them and then shortlist the engine oils for review. Based on your interest and my funds, I always try to get them lab tested like I did with Motul, Castrol, Shell, Liquimoly and even Adenol which was again a result of this kind of Q&A sessions where I got to experience a good engine oil. I did get to see a comment on Putolin which I am yet to use although I have used the Drytec chain lube you can find its review from the link in the description if you have used their engine oil then please comment down with your experience I really like this kind of Q&A sessions for the interesting topics like we got here on overfilling of engine oil Honestly this is one thing I am really paranoid and particular about after seeing at least two cases of overfilling I can assure you that similar to low engine oil level Overfilling is not good for your engine. A friend of mine overfilled engine oil in his Activa and it refused to start as the spark plug was fouled with engine oil. Similarly, there was a case with the RTR 180 where the gasket leaked due to the oil pressure and apart from this a lot of oil also found its way into the air filter box. Excess oil can create excess pressure and foaming as the oil level rises in the crankshaft zone. Foaming is nothing but introduction of air cavity in the engine oil which takes away the homogeneous and uniform behavior of the engine oil. Introduction of air can directly affect the heat transfer capacity and formation of engine oil boundary layer. Excess engine oil can also create resistance to oil dipped parts like crankshaft and timing chain. And if somehow the engine oil find its way into the combustion chamber then it can create a mess and of course you will get to see oil burning smoke out from the exhaust. So checking the engine oil level is the first thing you should do after an oil change. Again you don't need to do some precise measurements like I do as most engines are comfortable with 5 to 10% variations as engine manufacturers do consider top up errors and engine oil evaporation. So as long as the engine oil level is between the minimum and maximum mark you are good to go. Now Anil Kumar has commented with a bunch of questions out of which there is a mention of using water and vinegar from the air intake. to remove carbon deposits now this can be discussed in two parts where first we have to understand that the air intake must always be kept clean and dry and should be kept away from moisture any presence of water in the air intake can bring things to stand still so please no vinegar or water in the air or fuel intake but things can be different if you want to clean stuff after disassembling parts but first we should know about vinegar scientifically known as acetic acid it comes from the organic side of chemistry Comparatively it is a mild acid that can be used to clean deposits from metal parts. Having experience with vinegar in the past, I will go ahead and say that I personally prefer fuel additives and stuff like engine flush and dedicated degreasers to clean off carbon and rust. Vinegar acts really slow in comparison to this cleaners and you have to make sure that the parts are rinsed and free from vinegar before installing back. I don't know about others but a friend of mine used to clean the brake pads of his Pulsar and his car by dipping it in vinegar followed by a water wash. If you ask me then I prefer leaving vinegar for the taste buds. So let me know in the comments if you have any other tricks like this. So that's it for this video and I hope you guys have liked it.